Hello and welcome to the Coach Me podcast. My name is Nadine Stille and I'm super happy you're here for this special episode in which we teamed up with Startup Grind Beijing to support entrepreneurs, founders and business owners on how to thrive and scale up with a global mindset. We recorded the session live during an event with Startup Grind Beijing, in which we first shared insights and facts entrepreneurs face now during the pandemic, but also in the near future of work. We went on to have an interactive, insightful and thought-provoking panel discussion and concluded with a workshop for participants of the event. For confidentiality reasons of the participants, we will not publish the workshop part here, but have the entire slide deck available for you in the show notes, so you still get maximum value. I'd like to specifically thank everyone at Startup Grind Beijing for collaborating with us for this truly global experience that got us up in the middle of the night here on the Canadian West Coast and engaged participants who were ready to experience the event in different time zones while joining us from four different continents. This event's co-stars who co-created the content and shared their insights, expertise and general amazingness have my special thanks. Tiffany Elsner, virtual coach for conscious leaders. Dana Smith, creativity coach. Karen Flynn, entrepreneur and business coach. And Helen Yang, leadership and financial wellness coach. Let's tune in. Welcome to today's session about where we will together discover how to scale up to a global mindset. And as you can see, we have today five speakers tuning in all the way from Canada, where it's the middle of the night. So kudos to you and thank you so much for making it to our today's session. Now a few words about Startup Grind. Uh, we have been present since 2010. So this year we have celebrated our 10th anniversary. We are a community of entrepreneurs uh, that is global and our mojo is to educate, connect and inspire startups. So as I've mentioned before, we are a community of startups, but not only, uh, we are also in our community also have founders, innovators and creators. Uh, we host thousands of events and all this is due to our presence globally. We have now chapters in more than 125 countries and chapters are present in over 600 cities. Here are our values that each chapter, no matter where you are, lives by, which is help others before yourself, give first, don't take, and of course, make friends, not contacts. This is our presence in China. It has been actually a very fast growth as we have right now over 25, uh, 24 sorry, active chapters as well as uh, five university chapters that focus actually on bringing a bit more of entrepreneurship to university campuses to get people thinking outside of the box of, and of traditional careers. Thank you, everyone. And right now, I would like to give the word to Nadine, who will start with the panel discussion. And I hope you all have a good session with us. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Sabrina, Madeline, and Cardi for welcoming us here today, for having organized everything. I know it always looks so smooth, but there's a whole lot of work that goes into uh, all of this in the background. The month's worth of preparation and connections coming to one goal here tonight or today. So uh, thank you very much for hosting us. It's very exciting uh, for us, and we're, uh, we're very grateful. So, yeah, welcome. Our coaching community is about to be two years old, so we're a startup as well. We're a global coaching community, bringing individuals and organizations together with qualified and trained and very enthusiastic coaches around the globe. And uh, our goal is to support others to truly thrive in their career and their lives. This is us in a nutshell for this particular event. Um, we have Karen, Tiffany, Helen, Dana and myself today. And before we dive into more of what's coming up today, I'd like to actually give the opportunity to uh, each one to introduce themselves. Uh, so we're starting off with Karen, then go to Tiffany, Dana, Helen and I'll finish up. Karen, off you go. Hi guys, it's wonderful to be here and see you all. I know exactly what it's like to be a startup. I did my grind in Asia, in my career in communications, 
love Asia, miss it incredibly, love the food. Now here in Vancouver, coaching lots of enthusiastic entrepreneurs and startups and loving it. Hope you take lots away from the session tonight. Hi, uh, my name is Tiffany Elsner. I'm a virtual coach for conscious leaders and I've traveled over 30 countries, lived and worked in uh, many places. And as my own business owner, yes, I totally understand the, <laughs> what it's like to go through that grind. So I'm um, excited to be here all and we, we can work through it together. Hi, I'm Dana Smith. I'm super excited again to be here with this incredible panel of coaches who I get to collaborate with. It's such a delight that we get to be invited into your circle and share a little bit of what we have to share. I'm a, a health coach and a wellness coach and a creativity coach, and I'm really interested in um, exploring the connection between creativity, innovation, and our well-being. So that's my current jam right now, and I'm really excited to unpack it. And I hope that we can have a lot of fun this afternoon, <laughs> day. It's 3 a.m. here. I don't know. <laughs> 7 p.m. where you are, I think. <laughs> I'll pass it off to Helen. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Hi, everyone. My name is Helen Young. I'm actually born, I was born and raised in Wuhan, China. So I spent the first almost 20 years in, in China and now another close to 20 years in <laughs> Canada. <laughs> so half and half. And I'm, I'm super passionate about, you know, helping you realize your dreams and lead the life you want. Um, so my focus area is the leadership and the financial wellness coach. There's something about really just embrace and embody your your wealth inside out. So can't wait to, to unpack everything with you all. Thanks. Great. Well, um, we're all we're all entrepreneurs uh, in this. We've all worked with a lot of people that are like Vancouver is is very international, multicultural here as well. So we've all supported uh, you know people from from all over the place. It's very entrepreneurial here, and a lot of us have that uh, international experience as well. My name is Nadine Schiller. That's my <laughs> that's my introduction coming a bit late. I'm also a coach. I'm a consultant. I founded uh, Coach Me um, back then. It was Coach Me Vancouver. Now we've gone global. About two years ago, Canada is the sixth country I'm living and working at. I'm super passionate about collaborating, working, and supporting people who are true change makers and community builders. Hence, we're here today. I love what Startup Brand is doing around the world. And yeah, can't wait to get started. The first question I have is, what does a global mindset mean to you? What do you understand under global mindset? There's no right, there's no wrong. Simply, what does that mean to you? And that's obviously a question we've asked ourselves as well. What is a, what is a global mindset? What would be our understanding? And that has obviously helped shape the panel discussion that's about to come up. So I'm saying taking a wider perspective, seeing the bigger picture, being open-minded. That's great. Yeah. Be ready to overcome any problems, ability to adapt fast to new information and trends. Very good. Yeah, that's um, definitely going along those lines of questions that we're going to answer later on and understanding many worldviews, learning from other cultures. Wonderful. There's a whole lot of information coming through. We've done a bit of research for today's event. We've come across information from Gallup, the global analytics and advice firm for leaders and organizations. They've had a, a report out a little while ago that said that a global mindset is actually the future of leadership development, meaning that there's a true need uh, for global leaders. And before you say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm not a leader, that's actually not true. You are leading your your area of expertise, you're leading your business and you're the expert in, in your life and in your business. So you're definitely a, a leader as well. Gallup came up with four strategies to develop global leadership. They first of all said that in order to develop this, they'd recommend to start early with multi-country and multicultural experiences and to really genuinely 
explore your curiosity uh, about others. So really emerge yourself of what it's like to um, to be in someone else's shoes. What is it that they're uh, passionate about? What is the culture like? What's the way of thinking like? And be super intentional about this and what you'd like to achieve uh, in all of this. So global mindset is not something that you take off, but it's something that you truly live. And the fourth point uh, Gallup came up with is to celebrate diversity in each individual. And that includes culture values, strengths, and so much more around diversity. So what stands out in this sense is that to have a global mindset truly is a mindset. It's not that nothing that you can just um, take off or say, oh yeah, this is, this is me. It's very intentional. It's about caring about someone else, about what's, what else is happening out there in the, uh, in the world and learning, constant learning and adapting to what's going on and caring about the answer when you listen, when you ask those questions. So we kept all this in mind for the panel discussion and we'll bring it all, all in for you to get some really good insights on how you can develop that as well. What else we looked at is the World Economic Forum. Every uh, few years, they bring out a top 10 list of skills required for a successful career. This year, they've just released the skill set for 20. 2025. On top of the top 10 list there, you can see analytical thinking and innovation, active learning and learning strategies, and complex problem solving, amongst obviously lots of other skills that are really important going forward. And as an entrepreneur, as a founder, you do need to be aware of what's going on, what the trends are. When this list of top skills was released, they've also released something else along those lines. And that is that every second person, 50% of all employees will need reskilling in the next five years. That's a huge number of people that need to be reskilled and need to learn something. And while uh, automation displaces an estimation of 85 million jobs globally, new jobs and actually more jobs, 97 million are set to come out of automation as well. So that's a huge shift again. And something else that was noteworthy by the World Economic Forum is that skills in self-management really are prominent on that list. And we're talking about things like active learning, resilience, stress tolerance, and flexibility. Those things you would have really had to draw on in the last few months as well this year, uh, obviously making it uh, through the pandemic as an entrepreneur. And on the topic of self-management, resilience, stress tolerance, etc., there's something else that is often seen as a stigma, as a taboo topic, but it does come up quite often depending on where you are in the world and something that you need to be aware of, not just for yourself, but for others as well. There's a study in the National Institute of Mental Health in the UK that said that 72% of entrepreneurs are directly or indirectly affected by mental health issues compared to just 48% of non-entrepreneurs. So again, that's something that you need to be aware of. And uh, loneliness for entrepreneurs is actually a major challenge, believe it or not, especially now during the pandemic. It can be lonely at the top, but it can be also very lonely to get to the top or even worse, right back down at the bottom, according to a, a Forbes article I came across. And um, someone called Professor Kelly Harding said that loneliness has, is a significant health risk. It goes along those uh, well established factors like smoking 15 cigarettes a day or heavy alcohol use, even high blood pressure and obesity. This is something that really needs uh, addressing and looking at when you're setting yourself up for long-term success as an entrepreneur. And uh, while I finish up the facts and, and trends session here in a moment, a few more things that really stood out and that we found when you're looking at global success and, and, and scaling uh, your business outside your immediate country. So funds said that creating leads, opportunities, the whole thing around networking has really changed during the pandemic. You need to be really innovative and creative of finding ways to expand your business. It's no longer possible to have an you know, in-person events anymore to make that connections and everything has just um, has just changed. So that's something to take into consideration. And talking about innovation and being creative when, you know, you're talking about scaling your business, the Global Innovation Index 
released this year's top 10 most innovative economies. And we're looking here at also something that really spans the entire globe with South Korea in the top 10 spot, followed by Germany, Singapore, Finland, Denmark, the Netherlands, UK, USA, Sweden, and topping it all off is uh, Switzerland as the winner of the uh, most innovative economies in 2020. So again, if you're looking to scale up and work with people in those economies or you're collaborating or your, your clients are there, it's something to take into consideration. How are people thinking? What's important to people in those economies? What's the best way of working together? All this comes up. Yeah, last but not least, an article in the Harvard Business Review that has just uh, been released really looked into uh, how to launch a startup in the post-COVID era. I highly recommend this article if that is you, if you're still thinking about launching this year. A quote that really stood out for me that I wanted to share with you here is, a look back at history shows us that crises are opportune moments for new ideas, innovations, and systems. Some of the most Famous companies today were launched right after the last economic crisis in 2008. And the companies that are listed here are WhatsApp, Uber, Groupon, Slack, and Airbnb. It's uh, difficult to think that they hadn't really existed until, you know, the economy in 2008. But hey, here they are. They're world leaders in um, really creative ways that really hadn't been there before. So there is a a gift in all of this and we need to choose to see it. So with that, we're going over to the uh, panel discussion. There's been a few numbers uh, coming up and down, understanding uh, the differences that exist in the world in terms of business and knowing how to adapt and set up our own approach accordingly. It was another comment to see what the global mindset is. There's maybe um, we can start right away with one of those questions. It's about um, all the change that is happening in the world at an accelerated speed. And we need to be able to adapt to change quickly, lead the way, especially with pandemic this year. So there had to be a, a lot of adaptation happen. And maybe Dana, you can start with this question. What signs of adaptations have you witnessed in the world? Oh, man. Um, I've really seen people come together in ways that we never have before. And it's been really inspiring. I think most of us, I mean, think of the early days of lockdown when, you know, we were being together in ways online, um, cheering for our healthcare workers out the windows. We were celebrating what we could. I mean, I think that there was like a real, like a loss of that celebratory tendency that we have re-embodied lately. So I think that that was a beautiful innovation and something that came back. We realized, oh my gosh, human connection is actually really important to us. And we take that for granted. So, so that, I mean, just in the human connection piece, but then we've seen instantaneously things that seemed so hard we're like suddenly fixed overnight. It's like, oh no, we can't work at home. That's too hard for our company or organization. And then boom, the next day, everybody's doing it all across the world. <laughs> it was fascinating just to watch that happen. I'm not saying it was easy or effortless or, you know, without error, but it was something that needed to happen. And we found a way in a very short period of time. Those are some of the things. I think, Karen, you're going to pipe in on this one too. I mean, building on what you said, those are all fantastic uh, changes that's taking place. And the adoption of technology has just ramped up unbelievably this year. So if you're in tech and IT in any way, you're going to be, you know, looking at growth exponentially as an agile entrepreneur. If you have the ability to serve your local communities with what the consumers are looking for, you're on track to do very well if you can make it, make those adaptations based on what's going on. I love the statistic that wherever there's been challenges, there are great opportunities to innovate. And again, I think of entrepreneurs as being agile to adapt and change just as quickly as consumer habits have changed this year you know, look at your strategies, look at what you're doing to take the opportunities at hand. Tiffany, maybe you can take the next one. Some of the changes that we've experienced so far will obviously be permanent and some others will um, revert back to how it was before. Now we get to basically choose what changes we want to take forward and what changes we want to leave behind. And basically... 
why should we why should we bother about being intentional about what we want to like take forward and what we want to leave behind i mean why bother yeah that's a great question <laughs> you know as dana and karen have talked about that we've seen irreversible changes right we've adapted to technology and once that door is open we're not going back on the smartphones <laughs> and, and people's use of different technologies to organize global events that is not backpedaling but there are going to be as dana mentioned certain things that with time drop off of either we regress back to where we were before the crises or you know we take a different path so what is important about being intentional I mean, it's the difference between going with all the circumstances that pull you in that direction or being intentional means that I'm choosing to keep with me what really works. And for some people, that may be continuing to work from home or work on the road. And for others, you know, it'd be use of technology that they would like to keep implementing and continue down that road. But for us, for a lot of people, there's also recognition that there's some changes that just don't (laughs) work for us. Mm -hmm. And why should I continue on, right? It's been how many months into the pandemic we realize is that we've had to adjust. This this new stability is not going to be the old stability. And so um, in creating that, there's opportunity here. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Dana, anything from your side on this? Yeah, you said that also. Great, Tiffany. Um, you reminded me what I wanted to say before mm. in what you said, which was brilliant. <laughs> so thanks for that. It was around the mindset that we carry forward to, you know, when we're like looking at like what you said, well, what do I want to take with me? And what do I want to leave behind as we enter this completely new terrain, which I guess is true for any time in life, except that we've had this enormous punctuation mark in the line of history where it's like, okay, and then smack, there's COVID and from this moment forward, we operated very differently in the world. So I think that that's the main difference is that we've had this global shared experience of this pandemic. And it's at this point where we can stop because we've been forced to <laughs> look around and go, hmm, what is it that's serving me and what is not? I have this opportunity to just pause for a moment and actually take an intentional action for the steps forward. And um, I don't think we've ever, well, not in my lifetime anyway, ever had such a, a clear pause. You know, actually, it's not a pause. It's a solid period. If we're talking like punctuation here, like we stopped, we fully, it was a full stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, something that is very cool is like all this innovation too, that we've been forced to experience and just adapt and change with. It's shown us that even when and it's shown us on a huge scale, global scale, even when it feels like we can't continue, we've found a way forward. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, that didn't stop us. It didn't stop us from doing the things that we had to do and making human connections and going to work in this new way and getting almost everything done that we need to has happened. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where there's a will, there's a creative yeah. way. And a lot has happened despite. All of that's what's what's going on. So the impact of change can be actually quite tough on a lot of people, right? On a, on a lot of levels, emotional level, mental level, business, obviously, and not just on the us as entrepreneurs, but also on the people that we're working and collaborating with. So my question would be to Helen, like, what are ways that we can navigate the situation? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And then especially when you mentioned about uh, the emotional piece, like what Dana said, this is a shared experience. It's not just happened to one individual. It, it's globally. So, um, and it's important to, to acknowledge that, to name what is happening. How are you really feeling? Are you exhausted? Are you tired? And Nadine, you mentioned about the loneliness. Sometimes it's not about solving, like how to not be tired or how to not feel in the loneliness, but it's to to just accepting what is right now and normalize what it is and try that. Like it will actually just open up more space for you. It's like you're right. I am like I'm exhausted. I'm I'm zoomed out. <laughs> this is way too much screen time, and just to call it out. It's, it's actually a different kind of relief uh, for, for your body and, and a mental health area. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say 
whatever that you are feeling, name it. And, and there's one more thing I want to add to it is, is to know that whatever that you're feeling may not, it may not be all yours. Because this is a shared global experience, you may have maybe sensed, you know, someone else's stress, uh, the, the challenges, <laughs> someone across the, uh, the oceans feeling. So you're actually picking up that energy as well. That's so important as well, for sure. If everyone else is stressed, it's like, how can you stay in Zen, uh, in Zen mode around this, right? Yeah, thank you for that. Karen, is there something you wanted to add? On? Yeah, to add to that, it's, you know, there's a reason the airline tells you to put your oxygen mask on first before you try to help others. Self-care at this time is utterly critical. And as an entrepreneur and startup, you have your own stresses well before the anxiety of COVID. So it's critical to take care of yourself right now, first and foremost, and then your team, then the people around you. I believe practicing greater empathy, celebrating small wins, having the ability to slow down and ask yourself, what do I need? And ask the people around you, how are you today? I mean, these are all markers that it's just going to change the way you behave as a leader. It's going to change the equity in your business and do it, do it for the sake of deepening the relationships. You know, this is a time to really kind of work with the people around you and look at partnerships and collaborations to work with each other. I think doing the research I've done recently on burnout and all of the new things we're facing with burnout, it's how we build the mental strength and how we deepen our relationships with each other that will really kind of lighten the load of 2020. So do what you can to take care of yourself first and then do what you can to take care of your team. Obviously, you just said it as well, the demands on entrepreneurs have always been high, but never quite as high as during this pandemic. And we need to take care of our mental health, even though I mentioned it before, especially like mental health can still be a, a, a taboo or a stigmatized topic. Um, maybe Tiffany, you can let us know your perspective on what the risk is of ignoring your own mental health. What if you don't do anything and just keep working? You keep, keep I think doing. there's an important thing to remember as entrepreneurs and founders. We're human. Reality check. Right. And so we're not robots and there's only so much efficiency and return we can get without actually re-nourishing. To Karen's point, that oxygen mask is so important because everything that we experience is filtered through this body, the body that you have. When I am tired and exhausted and burnt out, out goes my creativity. I have a lot harder time actually being able to comprehend what a situation is, how to deal with it. Um, when I'm burnt out, I'm usually emotionally a little bit more needy or unattached, depending on, you know, the situation. So there's so many things to consider. And so the risk of ignoring this pain or this exhaustion or this fatigue is that it puts your yourself and your business at risk. And so what seems like in the short term, again, of, okay, we're just going to dry a little harder, faster, stronger, more, like more hours in the day, you get a diminishing return. And if you study economics, you don't want diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to have a better return on your investment. And so invest in yourself and your health, because your emotional, mental and physical capacities are all intertwined together. And so if, if you as a founder are, or as um, a team leader are not taking care of yourself, it could get really ugly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Have yeah. anything to add? I'm just going to say the message that Tiffany shared is so important, taking care of yourself first. And this is something I truly believe is how you are in relationship with yourself directly impacts how you are in relationship with others and the world around you. Like you may or may not notice your presence does show up. Speaking of what's costing you, you know, is often when we feel certain ways, especially negatively, we try to just like tuck it away or try to suppress that. And, and the thing is, again, we're human beings. We're, 
we're not made of like a steel compartment that we could just lock away certain emotions and just pretend they're not there. Because the thing is, uh, I want to say is like, once again, we're, we're human being. So the moment that you're trying to suppress certain uh, emotions that you do not want to feel, consequently, you actually disconnect yourself and decrease your ability to feel the other expression of the feelings like joy, fulfillment, happiness. And you're not allowing, you may, you may not notice that you're actually not allowing yourself to feel fully off that celebration time of, you know, the little joys. Yeah. So it kind of impacts <laughs> holistically altogether. Mm. They're all interconnected. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. To summarize, it's, it's basically, if you don't let yourself feel the, the negative emotions, you're also not experiencing any of the positive ones as well. Although I'm not saying it necessarily as a, as a black and white, I know from a coaching perspective, there's a whole lot of ha happening and neither of them is right or wrong, just what, you know, works for you. But yeah. For sure. And, and there's a, there's a question like for you to think about is like, when was the last time you, you accept like at the end of the day, you're like, Okay, I have like a hundred percent, like 10 out of 10 satisfactory day. When was the last time you tell yourself that? Can I, can I add something? Yeah, go for it. Just yeah. about, just to kind of springboard off what Tiffany and Helen were saying. So yes, we all agree. Self-care is super important and self-care is different for each one of us. I think, you know, it's for some of us, it's, you know, reading books and taking time alone for other people, it's connecting with their community. And it can be polar opposites and all those things. But something that came to mind, especially when Tiffany was talking about, you know, some of the things that she experienced with, with her own burnout experience was how non-linear self-care is. It's not transactional. So it's not like if I put six hours of self-care in over the next week, then I'm going to get six units of something back that I can put into my business. And it's not, it's not so transactional and it's not measurable in the same way that, you know, like our to-do list and our goal setting is, <laughs> but I, I don't want that to discourage you. I'm more a uh, hope that it will encourage you to be patient with yourself, to be consistent and uh, to be forgiving, to be accepting and self-compassionate, all those things that are immeasurable and always need to be 100% there as mm -hmm. much as they can be. Yeah, um, thank you. Thanks. That's already some great uh, suggestions for building building your mental strength right there, right? Yeah. And something that Karen mentioned earlier as well is like self-empathy that comes in as well to, to build this up. And maybe we can, uh, to use your own words, Dana, popcorn some ideas around <laughs> building mental strength. And maybe we can all just uh, chime in. What are some other ways that you can build your mental strength? I'm a big fan of reflection and visualization during these times. As I was building my business, I knew how hard it was to be at the grind day in, day out. And it was very worthwhile stepping back and looking at what was working. We get so fixated as humans. Oh, this isn't working. This isn't working. We make that more important than what's actually working for us. And it's a great idea to step back and reflect and visualize and, and accept the things that are working well and what you could build on. Don't be so stressed and, and, and latch on to outcomes you didn't expect. You know, change is change. The very fact that you are, you are in a startup and you are an entrepreneur, change and adapt, change and adapt. That's going to be your map for a while accept it and work with it and open perspectives to what is available, what's possible and what has to change. Detach from the negatives and just keep taking care of yourself and moving on and looking hard at what's, what's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'd like to piggyback off. That's wonderful. Karen is focus on what is right. And I'm not saying to ignore <laughs> the things that need to you know, be dealt with, but there's, there needs to be celebration sometimes to think about it. This entire 2020, if you haven't had a celebration for yourself, like I guarantee you, no matter where you are in your startup, there's 
got to be something like a win for you, whether it's you personally or whether it's for you and your business and celebrate those. I myself have my own coach because as we get, you know, as we grow, we need more nourishment. Think of like a tree as a tree gets bigger and bigger, it's going to need more and more nutrients to get bigger. And so it's the same thing that as we grow as businesses and entities, as well as humans, that we continue to reflect, as Karen said, but also focus on the wins because that's very nourishing. And that's celebrating something as small as didn't lose that client or, you know, implemented a new technology that seems to be not completely driving me crazy. So as, as small as those wins are, reflect and find them because those will be a springboard quite often to, to get past the sticky points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. And that leads us into the to the uh, next question that I have for you around ways of working smarter and not harder. And you mentioned just there about some, you know, internal resources that you can kind of draw from or external resources that that being your uh, your own coach. Maybe um, Helen, we can other ways to work smarter and not harder. I, I want to kind of go back to, once again, just a reminder that we're a human being, uh, not human doing. And it feels like all we, <laughs> all we do all day is do, 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 you know, uh, goes to the checklist. And, and then this is where it's to, to pause. And, and uh, one of the ways is possibly connecting with the nature or anything that could have just help you to feel more present and connected. And there's something about a presence Well, I call it a smart way just to, to be able to reconnect with yourself and be present. Just imagine, like imagine your brain, you know, it's so noisy and, and not present. It's, it's like a turbulent ocean. And when it's so noisy like that, you can throw like an Empire State Building into the ocean and not even noticing what's going on. So being able to just center yourself and, and then get present quickly, it's like you're able to quiet your brain down and, and you'll be able to notice it's kind of turning a turbulent ocean into a, a steel pond. So when there's like a tiny little bit leaf that's like kind of landed on the surface of the pond, you'll notice the ripple effect and you'll become more, like those are information, you'll become more choiceful on, on making a wise decision from that perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so find a way, uh, could it be connect with nature, could it be just sing a song or dance or, or just uh, notice your breath, whatever way that help you to reconnect and, and be centered mm-hmm. first. Yeah. It's very individual as well of what, you know, what works for you, right? Yeah, thank you for sharing. And Dana, something to add on this? Yeah, a couple of things came to mind. Delegation came up as one as well. So farm out the stuff that you either don't have the skills for, are not good at, don't like doing. (laughs) Those are three good markers. If you can, find somebody else to do them for you. Because if you are required to spend a lot of your precious, precious time doing skills outside your zone of genius, you're not putting your life force to the best use. So that's where, you know, building your community is really important. Knowing who does what in your communities, which is like a global arrangement, certainly in this community, Mm -hmm. we're all over the world. And there's people here who are, have an amazing array of different skills. So figure out who does what. They probably love what you despise doing. Wouldn't that be cool? (laughs) <laughs> my bookkeeper actually loves bookkeeping. <laughs> Amazing. I don't. <laughs> That's not my jam. <laughs> the other one that came to mind too was um, forgive. Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know until you know it. You know, like don't be hard on yourself for not, not knowing. Like I've caught myself being mad at myself for not having a skill that I think I should have already. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, stop it. <laughs> That's just mean. Don't be mean to yourself. And there's plenty of other ways where forgiveness can roll in. You know, if something doesn't work out how you hoped, forgive the situation, forgive yourself for making mistakes along the way, forgive people in your partnerships if they haven't worked out. It's not worth it to hold on to a grudge. And as we're all experiencing, the world is actually a very small place. And there's a good chance that you're probably going to overlap with some of the same people in your business and in your life. So yeah, just makes it a lot nicer of a 
a lot nicer way to be if you can kind of really settle into that forgiveness space too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just sucking the energy out of you as well. And as uh, we mentioned earlier, there's only so much energy that we have. So make sure you're, you're putting it back in, right? So one of the topics that we talked about earlier as well was to that we need to be lifelong learners and in order to adapt to new technologies and to global customers, employee or even the clients that we're working with, um, we will all need to be lifelong learners for ever <laughs> um, to enable others around us and enable the others around us to be the same. It's not just that we need to learn, everyone else needs to have that type of mindset as well. So what resources and tools do we have available to be lifelong learners? Tiffany, you want to take that? I think the resources to be lifelong learners first is the perspective, right? That is your biggest resource is to first say, I am a lifelong learner. There's this this totally outdated notion um, in a lot of places that, okay, well, if I go to university, get a degree, I'm done. And then I can just, you know, coast. My guess is because you're an entrepreneur that that wasn't working for you. And that's because you're following your passion of this human need to constantly learn. I mean, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, we are learning and adapting. I mean, how did you learn the language that you are speaking right now? It's it's not that you sat down and you said, okay, I'm going to learn the syntax of uh, that particular language. No, it's 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 just something that happened organically. So whether you try to or not, it's going to happen. And so how do we make learning work for us? And that is, first of all, the mindset of learning, but then also realizing we are more now global than ever. And there's just so many ways that we can continue to learn. It's not just from textbooks. There's this, again, idea that, okay, I, I need to go to a textbook or I need to take a course to learn. There's a yes. Those are both great examples. And there's an and of everything you are doing in your life is learning right now. Every time you fail or feel like you failed, every time you've had a win, Helen, you were saying this beautiful metaphor earlier of when your mind is an ocean, right? Like it is chaos. You don't notice anything. And yet when I'm still, I will notice that little leaf and that ripple effect and that observing what happens when the leaf falls. That for me is data. That for me is also nourishment. That for me is so many things and that's learning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Do you want to? Yeah, I, I just like, that... yes, yes. And yes. <laughs> It's really about seeing everything as a teacher and, you know, things that troubles you, things that, you know, makes you come alive, whatever that you're feeling. And it, again, like Tiffany said, use it as a data, as information and they're teachers. So when, when you're changing that mindset of, uh, wow, what, what can I learn from here? What can I learn about myself? What did I learn from this experience? It, it's kind of opening that level of curiosity in, in your, you know, whole body. And, and then here's the thing is curiosity is the antidote for judgment. And really, which, which you know, what voice do you want to constantly feed in, in yourself? Feed the curiosity, feed the learner's mindset, not the sabotaging voices. Mm -hmm. yeah thank I, you. I, I love that that's great for me it's really setting your egos aside at this juncture putting your egos check them at the door and say you know what i'm not i'm not good at everything i could use some help here it's a great time to look at partnerships it's a great time to simply ask for help there is such strength in that admission that you'll be glad that you did and the other thing I'd like to mention is at this time, people are so interested in helping each other that mentorship can be a gift if you haven't reached out already. Learning through mentorship and learning through giving yourself as a role model and mentoring is tremendous, giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is truly a way to learn and get better at the things that you don't know or you open your perspective to things that you don't know. Yeah, totally. Dana? You guys are also brilliant. Great contributions. <laughs> there were a lot of nodding heads we, in the, <laughs> the last questions. <laughs> yeah. Something sparked my 
mind when someone was talking about how sometimes it's not a new thing that we need. Sometimes it's a new perspective on, but on an old thing. So when, cause sometimes we can't get rid of the challenges or the blocks that we're facing and we need an innovative new creative solution that might simply just be, you know, looking at it with fresh eyes, pretending that you are someone else or you're using a different set of skills that you don't have. You could even pretend or visualize that you're a giraffe and you're trying to solve this instead of being just a lowly human or what have you, and just get playful with it because we get really serious when we're faced with challenges. So you may want to invite in some people, like Karen was saying, to, to play along with you just to see if you can shake off that stuckness because, you know, curiosity and playfulness are also really helpful for busting up self-judgment. You know, when we get all crappy on ourselves, we're like, oh, I can't solve this problem. I suck. I should just throw my business down the drain. Blah. And that's not true. <laughs> You're just mm-hmm. having a challenge <laughs> and you will get through this. <laughs> exactly. We're naturally creative, uh, resourceful and whole. We'll, we'll get through it. Sometimes you just need uh, someone to, to support you through that, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And obviously, it came up a few times um, today that it's so, it, it is a tough time right there, right now, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. And recovering from setbacks quickly or pivoting in a flexible, creative way will actually give us a competitive edge. And that is a, something that we can more easily do as uh, as entrepreneurs and founders and maybe some of the more established companies out there. So in order to remain strong in, and internationally competitive, we have to play the long game as in be resilient and be sustainable. So how can we build our resilience muscles and create space for innovation? Maybe Karen, you want to take that on? Sure. I think this is a great time as any to give yourself permission to deep dive into new areas, new ideas, new thoughts. Information is readily available. If you need to pivot as a startup, do it again. Don't let ego stand in the way of what you should accept, change, do better. If you have done or interested This is also a time to maybe revisit and align your purpose to your business. It is a great time to reflect and see what it is you're doing and how you're doing it because it will unveil new areas of creativity for you, I believe, and encourage the same from people around you. I can't stress this enough that this is a really a time for really addressing the the way you're taking your startup from here to where you see yourself in the near future and the medium term in order to move things along using the smart goals we're going to talk about later, but also revisiting your personal and deepening your personal relationships as you go along. Those things are going to be gifts in the future to get through this. Mm -hmm. We're all in this together. So we have the magic of collaboration and partnerships available to us. And I think all of the data that we've seen so far, particularly for startups and entrepreneurs, people are willing to help. Just Mm -hmm. ask. Yeah, exactly. We're coming towards the end of the panel discussion. I think there's just one one more question we uh, round up with, and um, that's the ability to create and innovate are, are crucial for the future workforce. And that obviously includes us as entrepreneurs. So we need to, in order to make this happen, how can we uh, set ourselves up to be more creative and innovative, especially when it's stressful? How do we create that space for us to to do all this? Dana, do you want to start first with that question? How can we uh, set ourselves up to be more creative and innovative? Yeah, absolutely. We touched, I think, on a really important cornerstone earlier in that self-care and making sure that we have that sense of spaciousness. Because Tiffany said it earlier too, like first thing that goes out the door when we're feeling overwhelmed, stressed, or even that crispy burnt out feeling is we're going to lose the ability to feel the spaciousness required to allow ourselves to dream up new possibilities and new solutions and innovations. It's not a necessarily a quick fix as we explored, but something that we need to continue tending to that different forms of nourishment for ourselves. And that's super important. I'd say another piece too would be loosening our grip on attachment to everything, but outcomes in particular, because that can really lead us to um, 
getting down on ourselves. And that's very draining and also really stifles the potential of discovering something new. So if you only have all your grasp right onto one particular outcome, you're cutting off all the possibilities that could be available if you just had maybe like, you know, a fingertip grip on that idea and that Mm -hmm. outcome. So it opens up new doors and possibilities that way. Yeah, and I wanted to just expand uh, expand on what Dana says about self care. Like, what's underneath that is feeling alive. You know, when when you take care of yourself, there's something about you know you feel more energized, you feel more alive. And and there's a, a quote that I always look up to is, uh, "Don't ask the world what they need. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. Then go do it." Because what the world needs is for people who who are coming alive, you know, because when you're passionate, alive about doing something, that's innovation, that's creativity just flows. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else, Tiffany, from your side? Yeah. Creativity, hint, should be fun (laughs) or can be fun. There's sometimes this coupling that happens, especially, you know, in the startup phase where creativity equals, needs to equal some sort of like return just start small. Like creativity for you is, is doing what interests you and what pa- what you're passionate about. And it can be something as small as once a day for 10 minutes, just saying, I'm going to do something that I don't usually do. That in itself breaks the pattern of habits and gets humans out of these stuck perspectives is, is physically changing what we're doing and how we're doing it. And so start small. Right. Mm-hmm. And don't feel like creativity and, and coming up with these innovative ideas has to come like this. Some of the best things have come, you know, to me during walks, not when I'm sitting at the computer staring, trying to make something work. <laughs> it's, it's that joy, you know, when I'm in the nature space and I'm doing the things that nourish me. So find what nourishes you and, and just create from there. Right. But what a way to uh, round this off. Thank you, Tiffany, uh, Karen, Dana, and Helen. I'd like to quickly hand over the, the phone back to Karen and me sharing something about goal setting, something that you can take all as a, as homework or a takeaway from today. Mm-hmm. So it's about smart goals. And some of you may well be familiar with smart goals. Uh, it's a universal tool that companies have used for a while, but Really, for you to embrace what we've shared today, and hopefully some or a lot of parts of it has resonated with you, set yourself some SMART goals going forward so that you really shift, you really come out of this transformed in some way, change some habits, change some mindsets. So set some SMART goals for yourself and be honest, right? So the first one, specific goal or goals. Be as specific as possible with what you want to achieve, given the new information and the new thoughts that we've shared with you this evening. Make it measurable. Put in some milestones so that you know you're on track. So whether you choose to do one big goal or a series of mini goals, Ensure that you put some milestones to each of them so that you know you're making the progress you want to make. Make it achievable. Don't set yourself something like, okay, I want my first five years of business to give me a million dollars. That may be achievable, but it's really hard to stay motivated and focused unless you make it so that every quarter you can look at, ah, I'm moving in the right direction. This goal is challenging, but achievable. This goal is challenging. I need to change it or adapt it. So make your goals achievable. Little by little, week at a time, month at a time, quarter at a time. Make your goals relevant to your situation and to your long-term vision. And if possible, to your purpose. What is it you set out to do? So make your goals relevant. Don't get off track. Time is everything. Effort is everything. You got to take care of yourself while you're doing this. So make the goals you're achieving, investing in, putting resource into relevant to your vision and set it as time based. So it will also help you to prioritize. I said, even though I'm, I'm coaching and I'm doing a lot of 
charity work, I set my week out ahead of me and everything is time-based because it helps me to prioritize my time and it helps me to set self-care time in there. So set your goals on a time scale. I hope that's clear. It's pretty straightforward. And try to incorporate some of the things that we've shared with you. Try to see how it can be used for yourself and for your team and for your vision. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. There is a a whole lot that needs to be said about uh, moving forward towards your goals and, you know, related to what you value in life, your life's purpose and, and things like that. And that's obviously when collaboration with a coach would come in handy as well. Thank you so much from our side. It's been a a pleasure all the way around the globe. It's wonderful seeing everyone on the screen and uh, interacting with you. It's it's been truly wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you again for making your time and joining us. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you again to Startup Grind Vision coaches Helen Young, Karen Flynn, Dana Smith, and Tiffany Elsner. If you're an entrepreneur, founder, or business owner and want to tackle the many challenges head on, why not get a coach on your side to support you? For a complimentary first coaching chat, simply go to coachme.global forward slash book. That's coachme.global forward slash book. I'm looking forward to welcoming you to our next Coach Me podcast episode. Stay curious, Nadine.